past few weeks, the Captain Tom Foundation, set up in honour of the war hero, has been making headlines with reports suggesting it is currently under investigation. A charity commission, the sector's watchdog, is said to be probing the foundation over concerns raised about its accounts. Well, in an exclusive interview, we're joined now by Hannah Ingram Moore, the founder of the foundation and daughter of the late Sir Captain Tom. Good morning. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. I know just by being here, there is a lot of clearing up that you really want to do to kind of set the record straight. So the, the, char the charity is being reviewed and that doesn't necessarily mean that there is any wrongdoing. So I guess the first question from a lot of people watching was, it raised an extraordinary amount of money, 39 million. Where did it go? So back to those, imagine those original days um, in April 2020, yeah. when we challenged my father to walk up and down for a hundred uh, pound a lap. Yep. Um, that three and a half weeks raised 38.9 million pounds. That went directly to NHS charities together. The foundation hadn't even been set up at that point. So that entire 38.9 million went to NHS charities together and they have distributed it. Why did you want to come on here today? Because of course, you know, round the kitchen table with my father. Um, it was really as we hit about 20 million in the second week that we recognised what he'd become as this beacon of hope to the world. Mm. Because it wasn't just here, it was everywhere. People from 163 countries had donated. Mm -hmm. And he'd crossed the boundaries of gender, race, nationality, social status and age. And we wanted, together with him, to have a place where people could access that legacy, that beyond our generation, the next generation, and beyond people in this country. And that's why we created the Captain Tom Foundation, mm. with love and hope. Mm. And we published our first annual accounts and they are independently audited. Mm. And um, in that first year of the charity, um, my business loaned the foundation some money because we didn't want to eat into the first donation we'd had, which was £100,000 from a corporate donator. Yeah. And we didn't want to, that's all we had, £100,000. And we didn't want to take all that money for costs, so we loaned it. Um, on the basis that we were also lending money from my business that was suffering during the pandemic. Yeah. So we needed to have it reimbursed. What happened, um, so very straightforward, um, when the charity had a bit more money, we were reimbursed those costs and that landed as a headline. And so this was the £50,000? Yes, that was right. the £50,000. That landed as a headline that I had essentially paid myself £50,000 back into my own businesses, which is absolutely not, not true. Not the case. There was also reports that you could have received a six-figure salary, so sort of £150,000. That would have worked out about 13.6% of the charity's first year of income. Yes. That's a lot of money. They were saying that's kind of the CAO of the RSPCA that is earning sort of tenfold what this charity is earning. Yes. Any truth in that? Absolutely none. And keep in mind that these accounts are a snapshot in time for the very first year of the, of the charity. Yeah. And they're independently audited, so we couldn't have made any of these numbers up. But the 150,000, it's absolutely not true. What the trustees did was ask for a benchmarking. Please tell us, if we were to, if we were to employ a CEO, mm -hmm. what would be the benchmark? What's the highest, what's the lowest? Right. And that's all, the highest happened to be 150, the lowest is about 60, depending on the charity. And um, so the 150 is simply not true. Um, so just looking at, looking at the, the, the complaints that have been had, um, and some of those you've sort of answered here, in the period when it was set up, that's June 2020, May the 31st, 2021, accounts showed that more money, £162,000 spent in the first year on management and administration than on donations and good causes. 50000 which you've addressed, those non-charitable outgoings paid to companies run by you, including Matrix, a firm that gives skills advice to businesses, your directors, uh, trustee for a little more than a month in 2021, and then uh, the interim CEO job offered. Um, and then also reports claiming that the foundation uh, tried to appoint you uh, as its CEO on a £150,000 salary. You addressed that a little bit there. Um, so all of these, you're saying each one of those, because you wanted to come on here today to say, listen, this is not true. This is false. You're being trolled horrifically. If any of that proves to be true, then you've stuck your head way above the parapet and sat on our sofa here. You'll be found out. A hundred percent. And look, from my point of view, my whole life, I've wanted to be held accountable. That's what my father taught me. Stand up, be counted and be accountable. We've never shied away from regulation. 
hold me accountable, hold my feet to the flame. Mm. You know, I'm guarding my father's legacy. Like, that's how we feel with the guardians. We'd never hurt it. But I would never be able to sit on here and tell you something that's not true. It's clear our accounts are there to be seen, but we're not hiding mm -hmm. anything. There's nothing wrong. We haven't made any false action. And I genuinely think, though, that the vast majority of people know that. Mm. Um, we feel love and support, we do. But it is those clickbait headlines have been destructive mm. and have put the foundation at peril. Well, the charity suffers ultimately, yes, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does. Um, because it must be so, like, the goodwill towards yourself and your father and his legacy and the charity, I mean, it was an outpouring across the UK, across the world that we haven't seen in a long time, to now suddenly be on the receiving end of trolls, saying the most awful things about you, saying that you are, you're milking your father's legacy, that you were there always in those interviews, standing there, it was nothing to do with you, why did you have to get in on that? I mean, that must be horrible. Devastating, honestly. And if you think that my father couldn't hear, yeah. that's the only reason I ever sat there. You know, he'd lived with us for 13 years. And, of course, we said to him, what, we can't throw you a 100th birthday party. Walk up and down a 100 times, we'll give you a pound a lap. Why don't we donate it to charity? Yeah. I wouldn't have sat there for any other reason than to support him. Yeah. And we were as a family, you know, we were richer for being together. Our multi-generational family was extraordinary. Yeah. And our children are different before, you know, because of it. But imagine having to tell your children, well, let me tell you this. My 13-year-old said to me, well, Mum, why do people hate you? Wow. After all that you've done, you know, after all, as a family and with my father, we've put over £41 million into charity in the last two years. Wow. And she doesn't understand. How can you explain to a 13-year-old when she sees that our lives have been immersed in ensuring his legacy lives on, mm. that people can hate it? And it's really difficult to okay. articulate, and Benji, who's 18, to give him the words to manage people coming up to him and okay, asking him. Please. And in the end, my father taught us resilience and um, positivity and humanity. He believed in the fundamental kindness of humanity. And, Hold and, on to that. And who do we? So do we. Mm. And ultimately, our, our ambition in his name is for a world without ageism. And so every single day that I look at the hate or I see the false headlines or I see the deliberate desire to try to find a hole in me, mm. to find something I've done wrong, I try my absolute best to know. If he was here today, it would be we saw We saw the absolute best of human nature... We did. ..surrounding your father, um, and we were all empowered by it. There are... Anyone who's been in the public eye, we've had it as well, you know. People will believe what they want to believe yeah. regardless. And no matter what you say, you can't change their minds. How does that make you feel, knowing where you came from and what the motive was? I mean, really challenging. But I think that I recognise we can't possibly make everybody happy. Mm. We would love to think that we could. And, and, but even my father got hated, remember? People even trolled my father, we just never told him. So we recognise that this beacon of hope that he came to the world you're right, to the world, can attract negativity. Mm. Um, this has just been a shocking amount of negativity that's been really honed directly at me personally. But this is um, not about me. No. And actually, do you know what? It wasn't about the money. It was about humanity. You've had to postpone the day as well, haven't you? Was it in June you were going to have, yeah. your, have your day? We couldn't possibly do it this year because um, whilst we know the Charity Commission are working with us and reviewing, they're, they're not investigating. Um, it and that's becomes, quite important to say. It's, very, it's not it's, an investigation. It's not an investigation. We have worked with them as a fledgling charity. We welcome them and they are just reviewing based on so much noise. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's OK. Please look. Is, well, it, is there a possibility that when you set up a foundation like this that you could have been naive when you set it up because it's a new thing? <laughs> I think we've been incredibly naive, um, but I don't think that that means we're bad. I think that we're wholesome, good people, and um, we run businesses, we understand. But I think we stepped into this for love, for humanity, for, for allowing as many piece, people as possible access to his legacy. Mm -hmm. We never thought of the darkness, never, never, never crossed our minds. Keep 
doing what you're doing, keep up all the hard work. Uh, the Charity Commission has said our engagement with the trustees of the Captain Tom Foundation continues. We cannot comment further at this time. They added that they have been engaging with the charity since March 2021, and this does not mean that they have found any wrongdoing. Um, let's hope this gets sorted and resolved as quickly as possible so you can carry on doing the great work that you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. Well.